with an overview of Ohio AgriBility. Our mission is to promote success in agriculture for Ohio's farmers and farm families who are coping with disability or a long-term health condition. And I'll mention my presentation style. I do read the slides and I do describe the pictures. As a disability services professional, I frequently am presenting to audiences where we might have someone with a hearing or a visual disability, a learning disability, or something else. So to make it accessible to everyone, I do read the slides and I do, uh, I do describe the pictures. So to do that, I'm gonna talk about the pictures on the screen right now. On my far left is a picture of Jeff Austin. He's one of our clients. Um, he's wearing a gray t-shirt, blue shorts, and he's using, depending on the size of your screen, you may be able to see there's kind of a, um, a camouflage colored structure holding him. That's actually a standing wheelchair and he's working on a red tractor. Next picture over is Bill and Harold and Harold's dog Sadie and they are at our summer meeting from a few years ago, both clients of ours. The picture of the group in the middle is a group of our peers, our farm families and farmers. That was one of our summer meetings, summer of 2016. And I always have to mention how grateful we were that everyone came to that meeting. It was an Indian Lake at the park and it was very, very close to 100 that day. So it was a very hot day, but we were happy to meet everybody. And then on the far right, we've got John and he's speaking to a former colleague, Charlie, and John's also seated in a wheelchair. So Ohio AgriBility provides education and resources to farmers, agricultural businesses and groups, healthcare, education and disability professionals, and anyone who's interested in making farming safe and accessible. Pictures here on the far left, we have a, a ewe and her lamb. We in the center, we have one of our red barns with Ohio Bicentennial painted on the side. And on the far right, we have a group of chickens coming out of their barn. Ohio AgriBility is part of a national network of state and regional agribility projects. I believe there are 21 state and regional projects. And our national project is currently based at Purdue University. Funding for AgriBility is based on the US Farm Bill and it's competitively awarded on four year cycles. Funds are awarded to a state team comprised of a land grant university and a nonprofit organization. In Ohio, that is the Ohio State University and Easter Seals of Greater Cincinnati. One big thing we always like to note is that Ohio AgriBility cannot purchase equipment, property, or provide farmers with financial support. Our staff may make referrals to agri available agricultural vocational rehabilitation or community service organizations, some of which may be able to purchase equipment or provide financial assistance directly to farmers. Now that we've got the introductions out of the way, one of the things Ohio AgriBuilding does is help, identifies, help identify ways to keep farmers working. We make recommendations and a plan to keep that individual farming. We do not force anyone to follow our recommendations. It's very, very much driven by the farmer. And we wanna have reasonable expectations for farmers and with farmers and their families. What do they want help with? We can make recommendations, but we only do as much as they want. Uh, the photo here is of one of our clients. His name is Steve. He's showing off a rolling lift cart, which Rachel will talk about a little bit later. And then the woman in the picture is Elizabeth. She used to work for Op Opportunities for Ohioans with Disabilities, which is the Vocational Rehabilitation Agency in Ohio. And this is from a few years ago. We went up and visited Steve's farm. So you might think, I don't have a disability, so why should I con consider changing how I work? Well, um, there's always the benefit of increased safety, injury prevention, increased productivity. There's some great assistive technology available for everyone, not just people with disabilities. Some of the equipment, it can make it easier to use. Pain management or avoidance, I think is often top on everybody's mind, especially as we get older. And there's a positive impact on your family and employees if you don't injure yourself, if you have a safer workplace, and if you're not in pain. So what if someone just wants information and not a whole farm visit and assessment? We have a number of workshop topics, farming with a disability, arthritis in agriculture, gardening and farming with arthritis, 
collaborating with Ohio Agribility and Accessible Tourism, and I would also add assistive technology to keep you farming that we're doing today. We have displays at community events and health fairs, agricultural field days, agricultural safety seminars, agricultural trade shows, and civic organizational events. Now I'm gonna turn it over to Rachel and she's gonna talk about what happens when you call Agribility. So what happens when you call us? <clears throat> Generally, um, your phone call will go straight to a um, line that Laura answers and Laura will send that out to me or my colleague, Randy. Uh, we will call you back, um, try to get to know you a little bit, ask you about your farm, ask you um, what type of assistance you think you might need or you would like to look into. Um, we would then set up a farm visit, um, which is we refer to as the initial visit, come out, uh, meet with you, have you fill out some paperwork to um, help you apply for services either through OOD or just through AgriBility itself. Um, we then set up a plan of implementation, um, talk about what we're going to do next. Um, we also talk about our peer-to-peer -peer network, which just means that Maybe you just want to uh, get to know other folks who are experiencing some of the same challenges you are. Um, and then we also talk about the continued support and education. So once we enroll you in AgriAbility, we like to call you and check up on you or visit with you and just make sure that um, your services that you either received through AgriAbility or the information you received is still um, doing what you want it to. AT modifications and assessments. So AT is also referred to as assistive technology. It's equipment, software, and devices to increase and maintain or maintain function, productivity, or independence. Modifications are adjustments or attachments to machinery or facilities to make the original item safer and easier to use. Um, assessments are reports detailing the farmer's ability and disability of the farm operation um, and then it also includes recommendations for modifications or AT services. The assessment is the main part of um, AgriBility's portion of helping with OOD. We come out and we are farm inclined professionals that help the counselor who may not understand um, what a tractor is versus like a lawnmower or something like that. Um, we help them, we write a detailed report that helps them understand um, the capacity of the farm, the size of the farm, all of the equipment, how it is used, in what seasons, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Introduction and initial contact. Um, if you would like to receive services, basically you would contact Ohio AgriAbility. Um, you would have a brief conversation about your work on the farm and how your disability impacts your work. Um, explain explanation of Ohio AgriAbility services, um, and then we would refer you to um, a, rubber, a rural rehabilitation coordinator and schedule a farm visit. So that's kind of going over again what I talked about earlier, just what happens when you initially call um, Ohio AgriAbility. The farm visit, so again, myself or my colleague Randy, um, we are both rural rehabilitation coordinators. We will visit you at your farm, talk to you about your work, your equipment, and your facilities, and make recommendations. Um, some recommendations you can purchase yourself and you don't need um, maybe OOD or someone else to help you fund those recommendations. Um, some modifications are, ex are expensive. So again, we'll uh, make recommendations for safe and accessible work processes, modifications to your equipment or your work site. Um, or we would refer you to OOD services. Um, again, those are optional, no obligation to apply for services and no guarantee of services um, when we make that recommendation. The Rural Rehabilitation Coordinator also <clears throat> makes recommendations and assists with identifying appropriate AT modifications. Um, so what is vocational rehab in Ohio? Vocational rehabilitation are services for people with disabilities intended to help them overcome and manage barriers to continue or return to work, often administered by a government agency. 
um, Opportunities for Ohioans with Disabilities, or OOD, as we normally refer to it, um, is Ohio's vocational rehabilitation agency. They may assist Ohio AgriAbility clients with purchases of AT um, assistive technology or modifications. Um, again, like Laura said, we do not have funds to purchase these things ourselves. So normally, if we find a farmer in a situation where they need um, help purchasing the equipment, we refer them to OOD. Work plan implementation. Uh, rural rehabilitation coordinators will assist with selecting uh, assistive technology and modifications. Rural rehabilitation coordinators may be on hand for delivery and installation. We will follow up with the farmer about their assistive technology and modifications, make sure it's um, working good and it's a good fit for them and it's solving the problems that they were having. Um, we check in with the farmer a few times a year or as needed, um, again, to just keep following up and making sure that the equipment that they received or the services that they received are uh, working well. Um, next, we're going to talk about some equipment and show you some pictures of different equipment and building modifications. So the first picture here are two different tractors. On the left is a red tractor with a homemade lift um, that someone built. It's um, a hydraulic style lift with a platform that you would step onto the platform at ground level and it would lift you up to um, the station, the operator station of this open cab tractor. On the right is a lift built by um, Life Essentials, which is a company out of Indiana. Um, they are the only company in the United States that builds these kind of lifts. Um, and that is on a green tractor. Um, and it is the same type of design. It is a hydraulic powered lift that would take you um, from the ground straight up to the um, operator station of the cab. Um, this is more pictures of lifts and track chairs. So on the left is a gentleman on a lift that is mounted to the back of his pickup truck and he is um, navigating his way up to the combine cab. In the middle is a gentleman standing next to a cattle working chute with his track chair. Um, his track chair has the ability to stand him up, which he is in the standing position in that picture. And then on the uh, far right is uh, one of our clients, Ryan. He is in his track chair on top of a wood pile. Um, his business is to cut and split firewood and then sell that firewood. So um, the track chair gives him a lot of accessibility to get on top of his wood pile and maneuver around um, lots of different type of terrain he may encounter. The next pictures um, are tractor steps and handrail suggestions. Um, on the left is a red tractor with a uh, manufactured type um, set of aftermarket um, steps by, made by a company called K&M Manufacturing. They are at our tent usually during the farm science review. Um, these steps are at a different angle than the normal steps on the tractor so that it makes it easier to get up in the tractor. On the right are custom uh, fabricated handrail and stairs. So um, similar concept, but just again, made by the farmer himself. <coughs> the next picture is um, an example of upgrading your tractor seat. Um, on the left is the old tractor seat that doesn't have uh, an air ride system or a lot of give, which could create a lot of back problems, um, jolt you around quite a bit, just uh, overall worn out and uncomfortable. Um, and on the right is a new and improved tractor seat with um, a lot more support for the back, armrests, and um, you can see in the middle is the um, suspension system, which would um, take away a lot of the bouncing and jolting from going over bumps or uneven terrain. Uh, the next picture is um, describing stairs. So which is safer, climbing the wall on the left or the stairs on the right to get to the hayloft? Again, these are modifications that we suggest to help farmers um, keep farming. If it's difficult to you know, navigate a ladder, then and steps are much easier 
that's more than, you know, that's something we can definitely uh, recommend for OOD to help you put in place to make your farm um, more accessible for you. Um, here are more examples of accessibility. Um, on the left is a grain bin with newly installed stairs. So they took away the um, traditional ladder and added stairs to make it easier to get to the top. Um, on the right is a barn door where a man door was cut out of the big sliding doors so that it's, uh, you don't have to open both of the large doors to get in. You can just open the small man door. Um, the next picture are rolling carts that uh, or creepers that have lifts. So on the left is a cart with a lift. Um, you can put something on it on the ground and then lift it up with the jack that's somewhat hidden by um, the hitch that is on the cart <clears throat> and then makes it so you don't have to bend over as far to work on the whatever it is you want to put on the cart. On the right is um, a gentleman from Michigan who developed um, a creeper that can lift you up so that you can sit down in it like a chair and then you can lower yourself all the way to the floor and work on something that's very low to the ground and then lift yourself back up to stand easier from like a sitting position versus um, getting all the way down on the ground. A lot of times uh, you, you know, people can get to the ground but then they can't get back up. Um, and that part's difficult. So this helps you um, go from a seated position to on the floor and then back up to the seated position to stand again. Um, here's some examples of a livestock handling equipment. Um, on the right is Kip and former colleague Charlie with a Ketchum turntable for, um, they're using it for goats there. Um, so that makes it so Kip can turn the goats over um, on their side and work on their feet or give them vaccinations or whatever without having to try and handle them himself while he is doing it. It um, immobilizes the animal temporarily so that they can um, be safely handled. And then on the right is a, um, trying to, losing my train of thought of what it's called, but it's a, um, Temple Grandin style um, handling system where the animals come into it and then we'll go down the alleyway um, to another turntable where they can be um, given vaccinations, have their hooves trimmed, um, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, the next picture is an example of automated sliding doors. Uh, we work with a company called Propel um, Automated Doors and um, they can take uh, normal barn sliding, sliding, normal sliding barn doors and put power on them so that they can be opened um, like a garage door. So that's just two examples of those. Um, the next is uh, examples of gloves to help you either improve your grip or reduce vibration. Um, another uh, rather popular thing that we, uh, example that we provide is cameras and monitor systems. So um, the benefits to this is that not just that you can see, but it helps you so you don't have to look over your shoulder. Um, it helps strain on your neck, your spine, your hips. Um, you don't have to get on and off equipment to um, check if you're lined up for maybe say putting a hitch pin in. Um, it also helps you see like what's behind you. So if you're maneuvering around people a lot, um, you can see if there's people or animals or whatever behind you without having to turn and twist. Um, cameras are a great option to just keep your, you know, your head, your neck and your spine and your shoulders in good shape without having to always turn and look behind you. You can also um, monitor animals with in-barn cameras. Um, that's another suggestion we make a lot. So instead of having to go out in the middle of the night and check on your cows during calving or check on your sheep during lambing season, um, you can install cameras to check on them from the privacy of your home. Uh, 
Um, increased lighting is another uh, big thing that we um, suggest a lot. Think of going through that barn when it's not very well lit. You could trip over um, uneven surfaces or um, different things like that. When you have a lot better lighting in the barn, makes it easy to see, um, easy to maneuver around, and just um, easier to work, have a good workspace. Here are another couple of DIY solutions for hand controls. Um, on the left is hand controls made by um, one of our young farmer's dad. Um, so the hand controls are attached to the pedals and he can push the pedals down with the hand controls because he does not have use of his legs. Um, on the right are similar options, just different styles. So they replaced the pedals themselves with their hand controls and then they have more of just like a handle where the other style is a T-shape. Some more um, DIY solutions. So on the left is a set of stairs um, that <clears throat> is similar to like something you would see in a big box warehouse or something like that that are rolling that you could move around um, and put them in place wherever you may need. Um, in the middle is a young girl and she's using a roller system to roll hay bales versus having to carry them um, from one end of the barn to the other. And then on the far right is a hand truck or a dolly and they're using a large bucket to carry things around so you could put manure or water or tools or whatever in the bucket and then use the hand truck to carry them around versus um, having to lift the bucket up itself. Here are some more DIY solutions. Um, on the left, the two pictures are of boot pullers. So instead of having to bend down and pull your boots on, you could, excuse me, use the loops and hook the two handles into the loops of your boots and pull them on that way. Those were made by um, one of our farmers. In the middle is an example of a padded um, bucket handle. Uh, I also just did a Facebook video showing you how to install a padded bucket handle onto your um, your handle and then on the left or on the far right is um, garden tools that have been you know uh, adapted with foam to make them easier to grip um, and have a softer grip because of the padding on with the foam. Laura, you're on mute still. Thank you. Um, I'm going to speak about the peer-to-peer -peer network. Rachel's already talked about the services and some of the modifications and accommodations that we do. One great thing about our peer-to-peer -peer network is we, we contact all of our farmers and their families. We meet twice a year. Usually we have a summer meeting and then we have daily meetings at the Farm Science Review in September, but we get together, talk about new assistive technology. We ask the farmers for their DIY solutions. They talk about things that they're having trouble with, solutions they found for it, problem solving. Um, they like to get together, share solutions for problems, problem solve, and it's a great time. Part of it is social, I'll admit, because there's just no one who knows what you're going through like someone else. That's a group of our peers. A few years ago at our summer meeting, there is Miss Sadie up on Bill's lap. She always comes to those because she is part of the AgriBility family, but it's a great group and we really have, have found, I've learned so much from them and I think they really enjoy getting together. And also at Farm Science Review, we invite all of our farmers to come in and work at the tent for a few hours which I think has been great for the farmers and the visitors. So when Rachel mentioned continued support and contact, once an, an AgriBuildy farmer, always an AgriBuildy farmer, we have quarterly AgStat newsletters. Um, one of the things we have in there, I write an Ohio AgriBuildy in Action column. 
A lot of times I select one piece of equipment. I've written about the lift creepers, the rolling carts, cameras, grain bin stairs before. We follow up, you get followed up on with AgriBility staff, Rachel, Randy, myself, we'll contact farmers just to make sure everything's going well. That as we get, as people get older, they might have new needs or the equipment that was working for them. Rachel had shown you the tilt table that Kip was using. It's a manual tilt table and we've had several farmers that have had a manual and just as they've gotten older or, or it's become more difficult to use the manual, those have been sometimes upgraded with a hydraulic tilt table to where the same concept, the animal walks in to the, to the chute or the table and then they're held in place and a power switch is flipped so that it flips them over because it makes a big difference. Um, so if you want more information about AgriBility, we have 32 Ohio AgriBility fact sheets. Some of our topics are assistive technology for the farm, universal design on the farm, managing arthritis when farming. On our website, which is at the top up here, agribility.osu.edu slash resources, I have a tab for um, handouts and webinars 2020. So we have a handout that is an outline of this presentation. I have a handout that is photos that includes photos that you've seen today with, with information on where do you find those pieces of equipment. Some of them have prices, it's all approximate. I will also say that we do not get anything for, I'm not endorsing any of the products or vendors. We don't get any kind of kickbacks or remuneration. I just like to have an example to give to people. So when you're going and looking for some things or want some more information, it's easy for you to find. And as we've mentioned before, the Ag, Ag Safety Stat Newsletter, Safe Tactics for Ag Today, Safety Resources Spotlight, Ohio AgriBility in Action column, Injury Prevention and the Emergency Management, that's also listed under Resources. And that's it for us today. Does anyone have any questions? Here's my information. Here's Rachel's contact information. You can also contact us through the website. And Julie has listed our website and the link and my email up on the chat if you need to see that. Does anyone have any questions? If someone does have a question, they can type it in the or the Q&A, or you can also feel free to raise your hand and we can unmute you and you'll be welcome to talk directly. All right, I'm just getting Rachel's email posted here for everybody. Okay, I I think we are set to go. I don't see any other questions, ladies. Thank you so much. Thank and you. Yeah, this was great. Thanks for um, having us. Yeah, appreciate everybody tuning in. We will be back at three o'clock and we will talk about farming and gardening with arthritis or the guy I call arthritis and other <laughs> physical limitations. So I'm looking forward to that one myself. So thank you very much and we'll see you back at three o'clock. Thanks, Bye. Julie. Thanks, Rachel. Uh, Bye. Bye.